Welcome back to the shop. This week I'm going to be talking about another update on the KTM 1090 adventure here. Just got back from the Colorado BDR backroad discovery route. Four of us went out there. We had the KTM 1090, a KTM 990, a KTM 350, and then the lone BMW, an F800. So the trip was planned for about six months now and I'm not going to go through all of the details of the trip because I plan to do another video. I've got literally over 100 gigabytes of footage from that trip and I will be putting together a full length video specifically on the Colorado BDR. So if you haven't already, be sure to click that subscribe button and stay tuned for that. It will take some time to edit, so please be patient. But today we'll just talk about how the KTM 1090 Adventure R performed on that trip. Back in February, I knew this trip was coming up and that honestly was a big portion of what influenced my final decision to buy the KTM 1090 Adventure R. I had the Triumph Tiger 800, perfectly capable bike, and I'm sure it would have made the trip as well. However, after having done the trip and now with about 5,000 miles on this bike, I am definitely glad that I made the decision to buy this one and take it on this trip in particular. The terrain on the Colorado BDR is a wide, wide range. Everything from open flowing gravel roads to two track through the woods to rocky mountain passes. Again, after having done the trip, after having ridden this terrain, I am really, really glad that I made the choice that I did to go with the 1090 Adventure. It performed flawlessly throughout the entire trip. Um, the torque was instrumental in me being able to get up some of the steep climbs that we were doing in the grades. I'll edit in some clips just to give you guys a little bit of a taste of what that terrain was like. Again, however, I will be putting together a separate video specifically on that trip, so please be patient, but I'll tease you guys with a little bit of what we went through. It was a six day trip and obviously I've already done some videos and if you haven't seen them, I'll put some cards up top. You can click those in terms of what all I've added to this bike. The Tusk panniers held up really nice. However, after the trip, this pannier here did get pretty mangled. It was actually a really easy drop, but it just happened to be on a mountainside with a massive, massive rock to the right and the pannier hit that and what happened is it kind of caved the back here uh, where it mounts to the bracket. So um, I don't fault the panniers. I think any pannier would have gotten damaged in that particular scenario. It held up reasonably well considering what happened. It held all of the luggage for the rest of the trip, so no issues there. And most importantly for me is this was actually the pannier where I was carrying the drone that I was using to collect the aerial footage from the trip and that stayed perfectly intact inside this pannier, which is the primary reason why I run aluminum panniers. Now, as far as the rest of the bike goes, uh, no issues whatsoever. Through the vibrations, mountain passes, lots of, lots of rocky climbs, I did manage to lose one bolt on this side of the motorcycle, right here where the tusk pannier racks mount to the subframe. Uh, it vibrated loose, but I did not have another bolt to replace it and ran the rest of the trip without that one bolt and did not lose anything else. No damage to any of the controls or bodywork or exhaust or any of that. Um, I also had one bolt down at the exhaust clamp that again vibrated loose. So on a trip like this, what I would recommend is if you're going to do it, be sure you get up every morning and just kind of go through the bike. You're riding through extremely rocky vibration terrain. And so bolts, if they're not tight, if they don't have Loctite, they will come loose. So just do a good once over, make sure that everything's snugged up before you head out for the day. And other than that, I had absolutely no issues whatsoever with the 1090. The weight of the bike is really, again, only a concern when you have to pick it up. We had four people on this trip, three of us on big bikes. So we made a pact very early on that if anybody dropped their bike to not try and pick it up or waste the energy on their own, we had long days and big challenges ahead of us. So the rule of thumb was you just wait and then other people would come back and help you. So I think I dropped the bike a total of three times, all three times did exactly that. Two of us lifting the bike, absolutely no problem. While you're riding, the weight of this bike is again, 
um, handled very well, balanced very well. We were going through very tight switchbacks and I was able to you know, kind of ride with almost a trial style where I was you know, weighting the outside and counterbalancing the motorcycle to lean it over underneath me to make the really tight switchbacks. And again, that's just an area that I had already experienced here at home and it came in extremely handy out on the Colorado BDR. So I was really thankful again for making that choice for the ability to ride this motorcycle and having the mileage on it before I did the trip to have confidence to do those things because you do definitely get into areas on this trip where a small mistake can have catastrophic consequences. You are on two track, massive drop offs on the right or left hand side and it's not insane but it's definitely something that you need to be prepared for. Um, you need to have a bike that instills confidence that when you get into those situations that you know you have that confidence to go ahead and do what you need to do and make it through those scenarios. So again overall just extremely pleased with the motorcycle, really happy with how it turned out. When we got to the end of the trip we had to do about a 400 mile um, road ride back up to Denver to get back to where the trailer was. Again with the cruise control that was a very comfortable ride until we hit some pretty extreme weather. Um, not a whole lot the bike can do there. You just grin and bear it, you get through it, which we did, and everything went uh, relatively as planned. So we managed to get the other bike dropped back off at the Colorado Motorcycle Adventures uh, for storage, get my bike loaded up, get the F800 loaded up, and then the other guy was loading his 350 onto a trailer in Montrose, driving back up to Denver to pick up the 990 and haul that back. So there was a lot of logistics that went into this trip. Again, I want to say thank you to John C., who really put in the biggest effort in terms of coordinating that, who helped out right before I left for the trip when things were not looking so great for the KTM 1090 with the leaky fork seal. Uh, we got that all together. Obviously, the bike made it out there. The trip was a phenomenal experience. I'm so happy to have had the experience. Um, I will say that if you're considering doing this trip, please make sure that you are comfortable riding in a great deal of terrain because again it's not overwhelming but there is some very challenging terrain and you need to have that confidence to ride over this terrain and handle unexpected events from occurring lots of animals again you're riding on very large mountain sides that have significant drop-offs with very very big consequences if you make a mistake in the wrong place we were very fortunate. We had four bikes. All four of them made it. Minor mechanical issues along the way. We were able to fix all of those uh, roadside. Took a few trips to hardware stores and whatnot. We only had one flat tire. But again, overall, all four of the bikes performed really, really well. And the KTM 1090 in particular, in my opinion, I could not have asked for any more from the bike. It performed flawlessly. It gave me the confidence that I needed to ride through all these varying terrains. And the balance of the motorcycle, again, played a key role in being able to make it through tight switchbacks and scenarios like that. Uh, we hit some off-road sections with some little bumps that you could kind of, you know, get a little bit of air off of. Those were really fun. The suspension on the 1090 is, again, a standout feature. I was extremely happy with it. Played a little bit with the adjustments on the front forks, not too much, just a few clicks of compression and rebound. Um, again, just kind of trying to get a feel for what that was like. Uh, definitely makes a difference. You need to take some time and figure out the setting that works best for you. The manual is a great place to start with those settings. It'll give you some general guidelines. Make sure you take into account considerations for luggage that you're hauling, things of that nature. The fork seals did not leak a single drop the entire trip, so that problem is completely solved. Um, again, everything else performed absolutely flawlessly. Fuel injection is really nice to have on a trip like this with the elevation changes. Um, the bike always starts and runs and has good throttle response regardless of what elevation you're at. We varied, I believe, somewhere around you know, 7,000 feet up to about 12,900, I think, was the peak that we hit. But again, uh, just can't say enough good things about the KTM 1090 Adventure. Can't say enough about the trip. It was probably, for me, almost a once in a lifetime experience. Uh, there were some parts that were extremely scary to me personally. There were some parts, specifically Black Bear Pass, which we wound up going down on these big bikes. No, we did not ride the ledge on them. We walked them down. 
Um, very, very intimidating, at least for someone of my skill level, but we did make it through. We managed to get the bikes down there. Staying in Telluride was absolutely beautiful. Being in Telluride and looking back up the mountainside to the Black Bear Pass that we had come down was a very, very clear reminder of exactly where we were and how challenging this terrain was. So again, overall, just a fantastic trip. 5,000 miles now on the KTM 1090. I would not go back and change my decision for anything. I'm extremely happy with this motorcycle, and this was a true testament to the capability for this bike with a rider of my skill level. You can obviously, again, do it on any bike. We did see the couple whose wife was riding the Ducati Scrambler and making it through all this terrain as well. Very, very impressive. Great couple, by the way. And so, you know, again, this trip was just um, a good test of all of the capabilities, all the things that you buy an adventure bike for. And in that regard, the 1090 did not disappoint in any way, shape, or form. The power delivery, the balance, the suspension, all of those things came together and really made the trip as enjoyable as possible. And I couldn't imagine have, having done the ride on any other motorcycle. I'm really, really pleased that this is the bike that I had on this trip. Um, if I had it to do over again, would I change anything? Yes, we overpacked. I think that always happens, um, but it added a little bit of weight. The bike carried it well. Um, you know, the top rack here with the bungee straps, it worked really well. We did a grocery run one night, strapped the groceries on the back and rode back with those. So that came in extremely handy. The center stand would be a nice add-on. Uh, the 990 was the one that got the flat and it had a center stand. So we were really fortunate. It made changing that tube really easy. I'm optimistic that uh, I won't run into too many issues like that because this is a tubeless setup, um, not a tubeless as in the gel inserts, but just no inner tubes in the wheels. Uh, so hopefully in most scenarios, you could just use a tire patch kit and you wouldn't necessarily need the center stand. But in those scenarios where you need to lube the chain or any of that type of maintenance and you're out in an environment like this, it certainly would come in handy. I might still add one to this motorcycle um, after doing the trip. The other thing that I know is still on my list to do is the exhaust. I will be swapping that. That'll drop about seven pounds off the motorcycle. That way, if I decide to do the center stand and add some weight back in, hopefully the two will offset each other and everything will remain pretty much where it is today. The SW Motec uh, tank ring and tank bag worked really, really well. It only came loose one time, and that usually happens if you stop at a gas station and you don't make sure that the bag is fully locked on there. But considering the terrain that we went through, I was really, really impressed that this tank ring setup held the bag in place through all of that terrain with no straps on the bag. So really, really pleased with that. I'm not a big fan of straps anywhere, whether it's rear luggage, top rack, or tank bag. So I was really pleased with that. Again, there will be more videos to come. So again, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button and stay tuned. We've got some really incredible footage. Again, it is over 100 gigabytes of footage. So it's going to take me a really long time to do the editing on that. So please bear with me, please be patient. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, be sure to share it on social media. And until next time, take care and ride safe.